In this video we're going to take a look at this Hater Spirit 41 petrol lawnmower and find out exactly why it won't start and we are going to get started right now. So first off if this is your first time on Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit channel be sure to hit subscribe and tick the bell notification icon that way I can keep you up to date on any new videos that come up on this channel and best of all it's free. So let's take a look at this Hater Spirit 41 petrol lawnmower. I've just picked this up from a customer and he's complaining it won't start. So I did what I would always do with a customer. I asked him what exactly they've done to it and if they've had it running at all. He said to me, it must be a bad mix. I said, a bad mix of what? So what he's actually done is mix this fuel for two stroke and put it in his petrol lawnmower. So let's try and start this up and just see what we get. Absolutely nothing. There's absolutely nothing happening at all here. Nothing. I'm not even beginning to make any sound like this lawnmower's going to start. So the first thing I want to do is just check. I've actually seen these back plug caps actually have this connector either dinted in or snapped, and you're not getting a good connection. So nothing's happening at all. The next thing I want to do, once I push that back on there, is I'm going to drain out this old fuel from this tank. I don't know what's going on in there. Let's drain that out. Let's put some fresh fuel in this mower and let's see if we can get it started actually without service in this carburetor. So using this Pila or Pella 6000 extractor, I'm just going to extract this old fuel from this tank. These are really handy to have these. Great for just removing any old oil or petrol. I use this a lot. And I always say in the videos, make sure you dispose of all this properly. Take it to the tip. So let's just tip some fresh petrol in here and see what we get. This Hater mower is actually a push model. I've just looked on Amazon and the current equivalent is £369. So before I remove this air filter box off here, let's just try it with this fresh fuel in just to see if we have any luck. Okay, this more feels like it's getting fuel. It's probably the wrong fuel that's pushing through this primer. What I'm gonna do is what I've done a lot of times on mowers, and you won't believe the difference it makes. And I've actually had mowers. If I just get a spark plug, I put a new one in it, you'd be amazed sometimes they'll just fire up. Take a look at that plug, look how dirty that is. It actually doesn't even look like there's a gap to have any spark. It looks like, it actually looks like he's tightened it in that far. There's no gap, so therefore I won't be getting a spark. So let's try this mower again. So how about that then? A simple spark plug, just a simple change, putting a brand new spark plug in. I've mentioned this on loads of videos, I used to pick loads and loads of Honda mowers up from an auction center. I actually talk about it on the uh, Masterclass DVD that I've got. And I used to just get them and people have tightened these plugs in so far and they just won't start. I used to bring them home, put a plug in them and I could not believe they would start. I'm not even sure if it was a, a like a trick that people did at auctions. They used to go around the field and nip them all in, making sure they wouldn't start to try and uh, bring the price down of the auction. Always try the simple things first. The reason I had a, an idea it might be like that is because when I pressed the primer bulb, you could hear the fuel going through and it felt quite good. Now you may have noticed there, it is actually revving up and down a little bit. So I am gonna actually service a carburetor for this customer as well. I'm not gonna film that on this video. There is a link in the description to the video exactly of how to do that. So if you look at the description below here, you will see exactly the repair I'm going to do. I'm just gonna take this air filter box off here. Because I'm suspecting with quite a bit of smoke when we started it up that this will have been tipped up. And if it has, it's going to need a, the air filter cleaning out. Let's just take a look. It, yeah, it does. Look at all that junk in there. It should actually look like that. It actually looks like a new one. Can you see that? You see how much oil's on there? 
So I'll give that a clean out, but that's a relatively new filter that. So as you take this tank and carburetor away from this motor, it's really simple to do. All you've got to do is unhook this one linkage here and the whole thing comes away and you can service this up. You can actually see this uh, diaphragm is actually really quite crinkled up. This is what stops it delivering the fuel properly. You might have noticed on that last video, it was just revving up and down a little bit. I don't think it would be too much longer until they started having problems with this. And once again, I'm going to use this carburetor diaphragm and gasket sets that I bought off eBay from a company called Mowers & Co. There's a link to that in the description below the video. And we'll test it out and we'll see how these work on this lawnmower. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hook this back on here and we'll try this out. So I'll link that back in. This connecting rod just goes in here and this little spring for anyone who's having a tinker at home, that just slots in there. That's where I took it out from and everything's moving as it should anyway, so let's try that. Right, so 20 minutes later, I'm, um, I'm still having bother with this hater mower. Um, and it ran, but it revved up and down. I've changed diaphragm and gasket, I've used loads of different ones, I've used official ones, non-official ones, still have the same problem. Um, and I'm going to try and check this keyway at the top. Before I do that, I'm just going to take the blade off at the bottom and just see what's what underneath. So I'm going to take this blade off, but to take the blade off, obviously this is turning and the actual blade ain't coming off, so what I've had to do is actually take this recoil cover off. I'm actually holding this here and undoing it from the bottom and hopefully if I do that, I should be able to get this off. Yeah, so just by holding that and getting under here, I've managed to just slacken this off. So let's take this off. We'll just see what we get. Just taking this blade adapter off here is actually a keyway on the back of them, just making sure I don't lose it. And although I'll take it off and check it, it feels okay. And look how easy that slid off there. It's becoming a bit of a rough repair this. I've actually just wedged something under this blade and just leaned against it. I just actually wanted to get this off here so I can get in here. I just want to check this keyway. You can see here. If you look down here from the top, this is what throws the timing off. So after a bit of fiddling about, I've actually got this flywheel key here, and you can actually see this keyway. This is how you check the, uh, the keyway at the top of this crankshaft here and make sure that it's uh, not had a knock, because if it's got a slight notch in it, it really won't run correctly. I've got a video on the site, I think it's either on the site or on the DVD of how to remove one of these, but it's a bit of a pain. Um, but eventually I've got there, and all I wanted to do was check this keyway. And this one looks to be perfect all the way around, there's a slight line in there. Even a slight, it's just a slight notch like that. What I'm going to do with this is for the job I've had to do to get it off, I'm going to put another one in. It does look okay to me, but I've got some more spares, and while it's off, I'm going to replace this. So this is how you check the uh, the keyway. This is what sets your timers, I've said to this ignition coil here. So make sure everything looks all right down the back of here as well. And if you've taken it off, it's probably a good idea just to put a new one on. These are only a few pence each, so I'm going to replace that while I'm here. So I've just slid my new one in there, and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to replace this. I've also cleaned this kill switch off as well, so it was covered in grease and had loads of stuff stuck to it. And it wasn't really having a good gap there. There's actually a video on uh, YouTube of how to replace this kill switch under here as well. So I've had some concern about this mower. Um, I've tried to film as many repairs as I can, and I've kind of run out of time, so I've got to give this back, but... I was slightly concerned about this blade here because it's slightly unusual. It's actually got a friction disc on here. And you can see here these, as I normally say in all the videos, should sit on the pins of the blade adapter. Uh, and they don't. So I was slightly concerned about that and I was slightly concerned that it was the wrong blade. So I actually sent Hater an email and I asked them the question. I asked them, does the blade on this machine sit on the pins of the blade adapter? I have a mower where the blade holes don't line up with the adapter ones, thanks. And they got straight back to me, brilliant customer service from uh, Hater, and they said the pins are for the friction disc, the blade is only secured with the bolt. So I then asked, well, why are there actually holes in this blade then? So they replied again saying we reserve the right to standardise all our components so that they can fit a wider range of mowers for cost effectiveness, etc. As I've not seen many mowers like this, I asked, what's the purpose of the friction disc? And the reply was, the friction disc prevents the crankshaft bending in the end event of accidentally striking a hard object. So, in a way, it does the same thing as the blade adapter, and it has a blade adapter on it. Although the blade doesn't sit on the adapter, this friction disc actually does. I've also basically stripped this right down. Unfortunately, I didn't have to find time to film everything. But I've put a lot of mobile phone footage on this video just so you can see what I've done, including the exhaust coming off. And I've actually had a look to make sure these valves weren't sticking as well and decarbonise the head.
So what exactly was the problem with this lawnmower? I understand your frustration, I've not told you yet, but I'm getting there, I promise. Um, the problem with this mower was, even though I'd swapped the carburetor and the petrol tank, even from one mower to another to try this, with one I knew was working well, it still revved up and down. That was my reason for checking the keyway. And after a lot of messing about and um, a lot more work than I needed to do, I actually found the problem. It wasn't the whole carburetor, it was actually these seal rings on the back of here. There's actually a black one and a white one. And although I'd swapped the carburetors and tanks over, I'd actually left these on the hay to mower. Um, and basically this wasn't forming a good seal. So what I did is I put a new one on and I pulled it over and it ran great. So all that's left to show you really is that we just took this mower out and I just went round and cut some of my local council grass, believe it or not, just to test this mower. So take a look at this next clip and we'll just see if this mower is actually running okay. So let's wave bye to this Hater Spirit 41 petrol lawnmower. If you like what you see here, please hit the subscribe button and also click the bell notification icon. That will keep you up to date with everything that's going on on Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit on YouTube. And of course it's free. Thanks for watching and I will see you again shortly.